I'm going to take a few minutes now to talk about measures of variation. Okay, I'm going to do this using the same example that we used in the previous video with measures of center. So we have my five leaderboard rankings from Candy Crush. Okay, so the random sample of five leaderboard rankings from five different levels that I did on Candy Crush. Okay, and so we want to know how much does this data, how, how widespread is this data? Right? Am I pretty consistent in how I perform on the leaderboard, or am I all over the place? Uh, you know, scoring low, scoring high, different times on the leaderboard. All right. Now, the easiest um, measure of variation that we can start with is the range. Okay. So, what is the range? Well, it's the the highest value, the max minus the lowest value, the min. Okay, uh, Using our notation, this would be um, x, and then there's a parentheses, n, minus x, parentheses, 1. What do those parentheses mean? That means that that's uh, the ranked data. Okay, So n would be the highest value of the data set when the data is ranked, and 1 would be the first observation of the ranked data. Okay, So that's this is the max value and this is the min value. What's our max value? 50. Our min value is 5. So the range for this sample is 45. Okay. Um, so range, super easy to calculate. That's a big deal. Um, but it can be highly, really highly influenced by outliers. Okay. So, uh, you know, say I have another observation in here. Um, Another observation where it's, I was on the hundredth level, a hundredth uh, leaderboard ranking, right? Um, well, that would make my range uh, change from 45 to 95, just because of one little outlier, right? So um, outliers are highly influencing the range because if you think about it, outliers are going to be either the min or the max value, and that's exactly what the range uses. Okay, so. Range, highly influenced by outliers, that's a big disadvantage. So instead of range, the most common measure of variation that we will use in this class will be the standard deviation. Okay, I'm going to start by talking about the sample standard deviation. Alright. This will be something you will want to commit to memory. It's a very big deal in this class, all right? Standard deviation. So what is standard deviation? It's very important you understand. What is standard deviation? Well, um, it is how much the data varies from the mean on average, okay? It's your average deviation from the mean. All right. So in the previous video, we found the sample mean for this data. Our sample mean was 27.4. How much does 50 vary from 27.4? Just take the difference, right? Do 50 minus 27.4, and you can figure out how much, how different is 50 from 27.4. You can do the same thing with 42. Do it again for 5, 28, 12. Okay. So then you get a bunch of differences from the mean. Okay, then basically what we're doing when we have the sample standard deviation, once you have all these differences from the mean, you average them. Average difference from the mean. That's what standard deviation is. Okay, now a formula is a little more complicated than that, and let's talk about it. So, a formula for sample standard deviation, we use S. Okay, and so what we're going to do, we're going to sum up from i equals 1 to n, xi minus x bar. Okay, so that's the ith observation minus the mean. That's the deviations from the mean that we just talked about. Um, if you sum this up right, if you were to go and do this, go ahead and sum up all those. You have positive and you have negative numbers. Um, those positive and negatives are going to cancel each other out and you're going to get zero for this sum. Okay, go ahead, try it. Uh, you'll see it happen. So um, how do we deal with that? Uh, well, you know, actually, we don't. We care about how different it is from the mean, but we don't actually care if it's above or below the mean. 
right? So we get rid of the signs, and the way we get rid of the signs is by squaring. Now, we square for sample standard deviation. We use the square to deal with that problem with the signs. Um, there are other measures of uh, variation that use absolute value uh, that is beyond the scope of this class, and we're not going to talk about those measures of variation. Uh, but if you're interested in it, use Google, and you can look it up. Um, so basically, it's the same thing, except you use it as absolute value. Now, this, uh, using the square, has really awesome, cool properties, uh, which um, if you further your study in statistics, you'll learn more about those properties. Um, and basically, this is, you know, this is the best uh, measure of variability because of those um, properties. So we tend to use the square because yeah, it, 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 it's the best uh, measure of variability, okay? Um, due to some theoretical properties. All right, so it's an average. We're gonna need to divide it by the sample size. Wait a second, I said we're gonna need to divide it by the sample size. Why did I divide it by n minus one? Well, um, notice we have x bar here. Now, how many unique observations are in the sample if you give me x bar? If you tell me the sample mean, I can tell you what the fifth observation is. Why? Because you gave me the sample mean. So the sample mean contains in it the sum of all the data, right? So mathematically, it's really not that hard. You give me the sample mean, I only need n minus one observations to be able to tell you what the last one is, right? So there's only n minus one unique values, right? And loosely speaking, that's why we use n minus one on the denominator, right? All right, so we squared it. We, we have the square term up top. Gotta undo that in some way. So we take the square root to undo that. All right, um, if I didn't take the square root, that would be called the sample um, variance. All right, so the sample variance is S squared. It's the exact same thing except without the square root. All right. um, the sample variance, we tend to only use the sample variance to be able to get at what is the sample standard deviation. So if you tell me the sample variance, what do I do? You told me the sample variance, I just take the square root of the sample variance to get the sample standard deviation. Easy day. So um, sample variance, its unit is squared, right? So if I had a bunch of measurements that were in inches, then the unit of the uh, sample variance would be in inches squared. Um, but the unit of the sample standard deviation, because we took the square root, would be back to inches. That's more meaningful, okay? So, um, you know, if the unit was in horses, right, if I had this many horses or something like that, variance unit would be horses squared. Yeah. But standard deviation would just be horses again. So the units um, become meaningful again in sample standard deviation, in variance, not so meaningful. So uh, we interpret standard deviation. All right? Um, so that's the equation for sample um, standard deviation. Let me briefly uh, mention the equation for, uh, for population variation. Okay, so population uh, standard deviation. All right, so if I had the hundreds uh, of leaderboard rankings that I've ever had, right, if I had the data for all of that and I wanted to know what the variation is um, for all of my leaderboard rankings, then I would use the population standard deviation, okay? So it uses the Greek letter uh, sigma, and the equation for it, it's very similar. We sum from I equals one to capital N, because now it's population, so we have capital N data points. Um, we go from XI minus, we don't need the sample mean because we have the population, so it would be mu, okay? And then instead of it being divided by N minus one, it'd be divided by capital N, all right? So this would be the population uh, standard deviation. And then for the population variance, same thing that goes um, for the sample variance. If you take away the square root, then that's the equation for the population variance. 
and the, and the um, notation for that would be uh, sigma squared. All right, great. So that's what this stuff is. How do we calculate it? Let's start calculating it. How do we calculate the sample standard deviation? All right. So my mean is 27.4. So I'm going to take the sum from i equals 1 to 5 xi minus 27.4, and we square it, and we're going to divide that by 5 minus 1. All right, sometimes uh, using a table to, to do this, you, could, you can calculate each of these things and then square them, and you can figure this all out, right? Um, but sometimes, you know, it's actually it's easier to not use this equation. Uh, there's an easier equation um, that's like a shortcut equation that I, I like to use, so... Uh, let's talk about that. Um, this is the shortcut. Shortcut. These are the same thing, it's just this is a shortcut formula. So it's n from i equals 1 to n of xi squared minus the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi, all of this is squared, divided by uh, n, n minus 1. Okay, mathematically, you can show that these two are equivalent. All right, now, if I were to calculate, calculate using this formula, it's way easier. So I want to go ahead and do that. My sample size is 5. The sum from i equals 1 to, n, to 5 of xi squared minus from i equals 1 to 5 of xi, all of that is squared, divided by 5 times 4, right? n minus 1 would be 4. All right, so I just need to know what's the sum of xi squared and what's the sum of xi. So the sum of xi, that's easy. All you have to do is add up all of these numbers from i equals 1 to 5, right? And we've done that before. We've added them up and we found that this was 137. Okay, so then I need to know what is the sum of the square observations, the sum of the squares. So I want to go ahead and square each of these. So this one would be 2500. Uh, this one would be 1764. 25, 784, 144, right? So what I'm doing is I'm squaring each of my data observations, okay? So the sum of the squares is 5, 2, 1, 7, okay? So now I'm going to go back to my equation, and I have 5, times the sum of the squares, right? So this is the sum of the squares. So 5 times 5, 2, 1, 7 minus the sum of the data, okay? 1, 37, all of that is squared. 5 times 4 is 20, all right? So that numerator, if you were to calculate that out, that should be 7316 divided by 20, you want to take the square root of that. So that comes to the square root of 36, um, sorry, 365.8, which comes to 19.1. Okay. So on average, my leaderboard ranking varies from the mean 19.1 rankings.